I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather is clear, can do, can do. Hello racing fans and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner brought to you by the Derby Bar and Grill. I'm Mike Heads along with Drew Forster. We're going to go through the uh, Saturday, June the 23rd races at beautiful Hastings yep. Race Course. It's going to be a little cooler this weekend. That was pretty warm last weekend. Beautiful and, weekend. Uh, uh, an excellent weekend of racing action. Yeah, and of course, uh, congratulations to the winners of the stakes. Yes, it was... Uh, uh, Mel Thor's Driller. Driller. Uh, that was uh, huge. What a huge performance from Driller. Wow. Uh, I didn't, see, I didn't see that coming. No. I know the horse is always knocking at the door. Uh, Don Daynard and, uh, and of course, Mel own, own the horse together. And uh, I could see him. I talked to Mel right after the race. Like, I could see him running good. It didn't yeah. shock me that he won. One by five or But four. the way he did it. Like, he, he crushed the field. Super and, of course, impressive. top quality, Blaine Wright, yep. uh, Dave Mowat. Aaron uh, Ryder. Great to see, and Aaron, uh, great to see uh, Dave Mowat, you know, running horses it, up yeah. north again. And, uh, of course, he's been a... Big uh, big sponsor uh, down in, in Washington State. Yeah, for years. Uh, under Ten Brock uh, for Blaine and Grant yeah. and uh, yeah. your brother and yeah, my dad trained for him. A, a real super guy too. It was but, great, uh, great interview in the winner's circle. Just said all the right things. Uh, yeah. Absolute class guy. But top quality did outrun Yukon Bell. It was a, it was a really good run. From, it was a good uh, race. Top quality. It was a good race. But uh, uh, no stakes races today. But we do have uh, some two year olds going six, which is always a lot of fun. And, yeah, uh, nice to go around two turns. We'll start with that race uh, yep. on Saturday. Uh, we do have uh, six uh, two year old fillies going uh, the six furlong distance. I ended up on the three Friday for uh, Dino Condolinios. Has a daughter of Shackleford, which uh, you know you don't get a chance to see too many Shackleford's. He's been an excellent stallion. Didn't cost a whole lot of money at the sale for the Swift Thoroughbreds, and uh, he's got three five eights, and there's. Most of the field has one five eights, yeah. and well, a couple of them have run, which is a real Bonus. plus. Uh, but Friday's got three five eights, and they're progressively getting faster. And I, I just thought he was, or she was, pretty live in here with Antonio Reyes. But the two horse backseat rider, who another one that'll appreciate a little more ground, I think. Bluegrass Cat of the backseat Becca exits that yeah. crazy race that Summerland won by nine lengths. This horse, uh, you know, 38-4, and four. Summerland did break the track record that day. And uh, David Lopez will re-ride for uh, trainer Mike Anderson. A couple of good 5.8s for this horse as well. So I think that horse is sitting on a good effort. And I put the one, Northern Star, who uh, was a, a $100,000 yearling purchase. Uh, one of the co- There was uh, quite a few hundred granders that year, a couple of years back, or actually yeah, last, last year. year. Uh, and uh, this horse has been working well in the mornings. Nothing flashy as yet, but just nice. And only the one five eights and one o two a couple of weeks ago. But I thought that horse was deserved some respect in here. I just thought Friday looked like the horse ready to go six. And uh, I got to try that one. I go with three two and one. I did go uh, when you just touched on Northern Grey Star. The Glen Todd horses yeah. are the two year olds are always good. really tough. Uh, you know he ha always has them ready, and. Uh, I, you know, this, as you mentioned, this is a horse he paid a fair bit for the BC sale here. Paid, paid 100 grand for uh, Aaron Grider going good right now. I went with Northern Grey Star. I agree, Friday. This is my second choice. Friday, as you mentioned, three five eights, Shackleford Top Connections, Dino, Antonio Reyes. Tap it, Mayor. There's a lot to like. It's yeah, good yeah. There's a lot, not a lot like of money. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, super live in here Friday. And I put GMT Baby out of the Phil Hall barn. Of course, GMT standing for Greenwich Mean Time, because mm -hmm. that's the mayor's name, Greenwich. This is a uh, half-sister to Lord Vancouver, who was a stakes mm -hmm. winner here. So this one might have some uh, ability. Phil Hall, obviously, uh, having a hell of a year, and uh, Amadeo Perez, too, and they team up very well together. One three six for me in the first, the baby race. On to the second, 62.50 for three-year-olds and up, going six furlongs. Field of six in here. Uh, tough to get past Adicha here. Uh, one for four earlier on this meet. Came back for 62.50. Crushed again. Went up to a 12.5, which was a tough heat with Bluegrass Angus. Absolutely. What, the 116 and yeah, four. That was crazy. That was a good fast heat for the level. Yeah, I got beat just a, a couple links by his stalemate Burnham for second. Back in for 62.50. He looks like a handful in here. I got Adicha on top. A presidential bird. This horse is a. Uh, Super consistent, just rolled right through his conditions. Just a horse with a lot of confidence right now. He, he won an eight, not rolling. three, won a four, non four, non winners of the year. This is a logical next step for him. And just a horse that's in top form right, right. now, and I like that about him. So I got him in second, and I threw an E. Taylor. He comes out of that uh, pretty tough race. We're going to touch on these horses a little bit later. Willing to travel, Citron Kid, Ace Deuce. That's a pretty tough eight. 
now in for 62.50. That little bit, uh, just that little edge taken off of there could be to his advantage. And this is back going six and a half. He only got to be three lengths, but uh, last time he ran for six and a half. Big effort for eight, back in for 62.50. I'd like to see Dennis Arojo take the call. One, two, five for me. Yeah, I don't even need to put my glasses on for this one. Uh, there's not much to talk <laughs> about. A ditch is the horse to yeah. beat. The horse doesn't win. I think Stormy Teen or Presidential Bird will win. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that. Really Stormy need Teen. to regress off his current form, uh, which doesn't look he has. He worked well. Uh, just got in a little tough against Bluegrass Angus, who's like a a twenty five thousand. That race came up really tough yeah. at twelve five, and uh, he's back in for sixty two fifty and. Uh, he was the boss for his first two starts this year, and I think he'll be the boss again. I put Stormy Team in for second, reclaimed by Jim Brown. Uh, Sean Savacci rides, and uh, I thought it, an okay effort behind uh, Sir Barkley, and you know, did lose to Sir Barkley, but didn't get the best of trips that day, Stormy Team, but moves inside like a little better trip for him, mm -hmm. and I, I agree with Presidential Bird. The source is going well, and uh, could definitely form part of the Zachter. He's, he's sharp for Steve Henson. The barn's going well, and... Uh, you know, definitely deserves a look. I went one, three, and two in race number two under the third race. That's some eight thousand dollar older horses here going a mile on the sixteenth. I thought the the one ace deuce, the five shooting jacket, and the six citron kid were all really close in ability. I it's a coin toss. I went yeah. ace deuce just because he has a rail. Uh, got a little too was a little too sharp last time. Was out there on the lead, and you know he faded the last part of the race. But that willing to travel, we'll have to see how he does. Uh, mind you, we won't get a yeah. chance to see him before he's, this he's race, Sunday, how yeah. good he is. But uh, I thought East Deuce ran a, a credible race. And he might have a tactical edge on Shooting Jacket and Citron Kid, who I think are his two main rivals. And uh, that's the only reason I'm yeah. going to go to him on top. Uh, Fleming's Beach should be in the mix early as well, or at least close to the pace. But uh, he, he's up in class. But still, he, he's, a, he's a cool horse. And, and when he runs well, he's he can carry his form up. With him, uh, I went one five and six. So I think Ace Two over Shooting Jacket, who's back in for at a reduced level, and Citron Kid, who just just got second last time. I thought those were the three I liked. One five six. Mike, you left out your horse. I know. Fleming I Beach. took your horse, mm -hmm. Fleming Beach. Uh, I, I really like the way his form progressed. Right, he went seventh his first start, fourth on the beat, a couple of lengths of the second start. Then he got to go long, and that's I the picked key. him all three times. Yeah, <laughs> well, you got him last time. Yeah at uh, three to one, but he's just a horse that's really traveling in the right direction, and the fact that he loves to go long, I know there's a lot of guys in here like Ace Deuce likes to go long, Citron Kid, Shooting Jacket. That was for four, this is eight, this is tougher, but the way that he won that race, I could see him coming right back and yeah. firing a big one. Uh, Amadeo Perez sticks with him. I'm gonna take Fleming's Beach, might get a little price on him. Fleming's Beach on top of Shooting Jacket, who's claimed for 12.5, tried 16. He's a horse that hasn't had anything to run at his last two. Mm -hmm two races, and there could be more of a pace on here with Catch Me and Brother Rod in here. Uh, Fleming's Beach, I think, sits just behind them. And Ace Deuce, so your top pick, I mean, has to be respected in here. Third last time, looked like he was going to win it, caught, got caught late, but a super live horse in here under Dennis Rojo. Four, five, and one, I went to in the third. On to the fourth, another two-year-old race. This one going the nursery course of three and a half. Take your pick. Uh, yeah, it's a guessing game. <laughs> this is there's a tough not one. a lot. Of insight no, we can give Yeah, here, no form you know. to go all. You're trying yeah. to look at works. I went to spin a tail out of the Craig McPherson barn. Top connections, River's Edge Racing Stable, Craig McPherson, Aaron Grider. These guys have been tough all year. It's got some nice works, 36 and 3. Another 36 and 3. 49 out of the gate recently. Uh, decent post. He's in the four mm. hole. He's not down on the rail. Uh, they paid a good price from the BC sale. What would that be, about 80000 A bit of 80. I think you're bang on. Tail of the cat. Yep. Uh, I, so that's, you know, good connections, decent works, well-bred, paid a bit for him at the sale. Spin a tail for me on top of Tricky Notice. Uh, Mark Clucci does a great job with his two-year-olds. They're all yes. running well. All those horses are running well, but he, he gets on them himself. He starts them, you know, he breaks them. He does, he's with them every step of the way. And uh, good to see Amadeo Perez take the call. Him and Mark Clucci, what yeah, are they? They've they got to well. be a high percentage, 26% right now. That's uh, over the last two years. Uh, yeah. I like to know this year. Like well, they're probably 40 percent or 50. <laughs> exactly. They're, when they team up, they're oh. deadly. Tricky notice in the second spot, and uh, I went to Chrissy in the third spot of the Dino Connellinus barn for the Swift Thoroughbreds, uh, daughter of pop artist out of the mare Ouch, the Gilded Time mare. Uh, that's a super Swift Thoroughbred Dino yeah. connection there. Ouch and pop artist and. Uh, some nice little works. I like that 37 out of the gate recently. I got a feeling this one can run a little bit. Dino's uh, maidens this year, and his two-year-olds have been running good. Four, three, eight for me. Yeah. 
I went. I, I I agree with the, the Mark Cloutier runner. Tricky notice. I think this horse is um, going to be probably pretty fast. The mare Tricky Mind was quick. Her foals are very quick. Um, as you mentioned, Mark does a great yeah. job with his two rows. They're well prepared. They're they're going to run professionally, and uh, I think this horse is live. Amadeo being lead. You know, you see, you can look at riders and see where do where do the top three riders show up. Yeah. And generally, because they they work hard in the mornings. A lot of these jocks and they get the, been to, on to be on a lot uh, of them. And they generally end up on the right one. And uh, I, I just think Amadeo Perez being on tricky notice is another plus. And I don't think the horse will be a, a small price. I think he might get five to one on the horse. And uh, just because there's nothing flashy, a couple of 49s, 38, 37, there's nothing, uh, you know, there's no bullet work and 35 and change yeah. or anything. Yeah, nobody 47. pops. You know, so I think the horse, you could get a good price. I agree with the eight, Chrissy, and we'll be pulling for Dino. He's the breeder of um, yeah, five I saw Gs. That. That'd be nice. A lot of, some green fees there. Get some golf green <laughs> fees uh, with Chrissy. But uh, this horse, I've seen the horse in the morning, so she is very quick. She's very professional. Uh, she won't be hard to spot. She's got a big bald face and a big white blaze on her face and a lot of white, a lot of chrome on her. And uh, she's worked well in the mornings. And Antonio Reyes gets a, a, quite a few live mounts out of Dino as well. So I wouldn't Pop be surprised Artists, if this horse was, was really cool fast horse. Too, yeah. He raised, he was had a lot of chrome on him yeah. too. And uh, the two horse, I went Miss Invasive for yeah. third. I was between Spin a Tail and, and Miss Invasive, but I'm leaving lots of horses out here. A filly by Gradar out of a. Uh, Victor with class, who's been a very good broodmare. Uh, good works. Greg Tracy always does good with his uh, young stock. Yeah. And uh, I went 3 8 and 2 to, to uh, in, in race number 4 to kick off the late uh, pick 4. We do have an also eligible you know, Miss Murphy. Yeah. Let's see if that one gets in. But uh, next to be uh, race number 5. Got some $4,000 non winners of two lifetime going a mile on the 16th. I thought it was between the 7 footman and the 5 yeah. manning. I thought those were the two horses. The rest of them. Uh, I can live or, you know, I, I think it's a battle for third after Manning and Footman. They've, they're both dropping in class, both want to run long. Uh, you know, Manning yeah. still has to prove himself at Hastings. Uh, I wasn't crazy about the way he ran after working reasonably well. Uh, he was very ordinary in his Hastings debut, but perhaps needed the race. But Footman, I thought he's run well in his first two starts sprinting. He, I think he wants to run long. And uh, I think he's your horse to be. I want Footman, Manning, Chase the Money, who was going to be second in that race before clipping heels yeah. and falling. And nice to see Jason Rodriguez back. He is back galloping horses in the morning. And uh, just recently, just the last couple of days. So it's good to see Jason, who hit the carpet pretty hard there. And, uh, yes, he did. And uh, was out for quite a while. And he's back in action, though. But I went 7-5-4 in race five. Not a lot to add. I mean, I just flip off the, lo the top two. I think it's, I, I'm with yeah, you. it's I, five and seven, seven, five. It's a coin toss. Uh, I just think this horse finally gets to go, you know, gets to go long. That's what he wants to do. You look mm -hmm. at his form, all those good races are going long. Uh, now in for four. I, I agree. Wasn't crazy about the last race, but it was sprinting. It was his first time I liked here. him last time. He hadn't run since the 19th of March. I could see him moving forward in this in this nice non two. That was a non three, obviously last time. Manning over Footman, but I will have uh, both of them in my uh, late pick four. And I threw in Fear the Cat for third. He's yep. only got beat a length Pretty and a half well. last time in this, in this race, and he gets Amadeo Perez. That's not going to hurt his chances. Five seven eight for me in the fifth. On to the sixth. Phillies and mares. Four thousand dollar claiming event. Uh, non winners of the year. Non four lifetime. Field of eight in here. Uh, Again, I mean, there's two I really like at the top and then kind of everybody else. Fire Beauty uh, only got beat two links last time. If she can, I mean, get back to anything like she was. This is a mare who's made over 110 grand. Yeah, no, she's uh, nice. You know. She's class standout. Yeah. Fire Beauty and a star to be. Uh, star to be won an eight and on three. Went up into some tough races with uh, Omi. Halloween Queen got beat by Halloween Queen last time. Uh, finishing, uh, she only got beat like a length. By uh, a couple links by Fire Beauty last time, so I got her in the second spot. I think it's Fire Beauty, then a star to be, and then pick one. Uh, I threw in Hippie for third. She just got beat a couple links by Arbonita Rose at this level last time, but really like Fire Beauty and a star to be Hippie for third. Don't have much. One to four add. three. Yeah, I don't have much to add. Fire Beauty for me is a single. Uh, if she doesn't win, then if you want to play two horses in this race, I think a star to be is the second horse, and then after that, I put Lady Cash in for third. Uh, she's been pretty yeah, consistent yeah, for yeah. Frank Barabee. But uh, Fire Beauty on numbers, on anything, if she could, you know, she is getting a little longer in the tooth, but... Uh, she's, she's not still, her old self, but she doesn't have to be. It's no, 4, at, at this level, yeah. 
you know, it's it, it's it's go time for her. Yeah. I think she's live. I went one, four, and seven in race number six. On to the finale on the Saturday program. I got some maiden eight thousand dollar claimers here, going six furlongs. Uh, I ended up on the one horse O Dexter goes without blinkers. Um, does shorten up the six and a half furlongs after that last race going along. The prior sprint I thought wasn't all that bad by Naughty Nitro, and uh, I just think the blinkers off made yeah. his horse a little bit better. Coat of Arms is probably the horse to beat and working well. Hasn't been seen for quite some time, but still uh, the connections are strong and um, definitely will be uh, played heavily in the mutuals. So that'll be your favorite. And I put the six horse, Robertino Red. Goes blinkers on for Cindy Krasner. Uh, last race was pretty good behind Mike Grayson and Fashionable Gold. And uh, looked to me like perhaps the best of the rest. I, I went one. I just thought O'Dexter can get a trip just in behind the speed. Uh, hope doesn't get too far out of it. But um, it's, it was one, two, or two, one for me. I went one, two, and six. Again, I don't have much to add. I got the same top two. I did go with Coat of Arms on top. Obviously, Glenn Todd having a very right. good year. So is Grider. What are they together? Thirty percent together. Coat of arms on top. I like. I'm with you. I like O'Dexter as well. Uh, that was going true. long last time, and that mm. was eight. Got a takes the blinkers off as you mentioned. Got a forty-one buyer last time. That is, you know, relatively higher than everybody else mm. in here. So O'Dexter for me in second, and I threw in Russian Thrill. Yep. Uh, went long last time in oh, four. Oh, terrible trip! What a brutal that horse was trip. Four, three and four wide the whole race. That was a tough just, trip for Russian that was, Thrill. Rough was kind. Back in for eight. Uh, yep. Going uh, six and a half. Forrester definitely due for some luck. Two, one, and three for me in the nightcap. That'll do it for our analysis of the Saturday card. Up next on screen will be our picks. Mike, as always, you're going to be up first. There we are. There Back you go. in race number one, I did go to the three. Uh, Friday. Friday. Uh, Friday on Saturday. We're hoping for Friday on Saturday. Three, two, one for me in the uh, Saturday opener. Race number two, I went to the one to ditch you. One, three, and two. Race number three, I went to the one, ace deuce over the five. Shooting jacket and the six, Citron Kid. But those three are all interchangeable. Race number four, I went to the three, Tricky Notice. Over the eight, Chrissy and the two, Miss Invasive, in a very tough three and a half furlong two-year-old race. Race number five, it looks like the five and seven, but I did go to the seven, uh, Equipment. I'm going to go seven, five, and four. Race number six, the one, Fire Beauty. Probably the best bet of the day. One, four, and seven for me in the sixth. And the seventh race, one of the one. Oh, Dexter, I'm going to go one, two, and six. On my picks, there we go. Back in the first, I went to the one, the baby race. I went to the one, Northern Grey Star, with the three and the six. In the second, I agree with Mike. This will be my best bet of the day. The one, Aditya, over the two and yeah, the five. That's true. That's another live. Yeah. It's super live. Uh, third race, I went to the four, Fleming's Beach, over the five and the one. In the fourth, another baby race, race four. I went to the four, spin a tail, over the three and the eight. In the fifth, I went the other way. Mike went Footman Manning. I went Manning Footman. Five, seven, eight. In the six, I agree with Mike. Fire View looks to be a handful in here over the four and the three. And in the nightcap, the seventh, I went to the two. Coat of arms over the one and the three. All right, thanks everyone for tuning in to our, the seven races at Hastings. Uh, we're not going to handicap the Bulldog races, but we do. Oh, I know we right. do have some Bulldog we have races. Bulldog races. For all you who've had your fill of the Wiener Dog <laughs> I know, races, we're moving to Bulldog. We're bringing on the Bulldogs. Hey, hey, we we need a slower breed, I guess yeah, they figured. I know, some of the, <laughs> slower breed. So yeah, now we're we'll, going with the Bulldogs. We'll get the Corgis next. Yeah, exactly. We'll get the Corgis. Next year will be Bassets or something. Yeah, something. <laughs> but we do have Bulldog races this week. It'll bring out a good fun. crowd. Uh, it's supposed to be a decent weekend. It should be a lot of fun. So try and make it out to Hastings. As always, if you can't make it out to Hastings, come on down here to the Derby Bar and Grill. Uh, always Hastings on the big screen. Lots of screens. Lots to going on here as far as horse racing. On behalf of Drew, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this edition of Handicapper's Corner. And we'll see you next time here at the Derby Bar and Grill. I got the horse right here, the name is Paul Revere, and here's a guy that says if the weather's clear, can't do.